I saw a couple of videos in the last few months. Bootboxing, featuring Snob Skrilla and Julian Smith Techno Jeep Original. Both of them featured cars being played by a group of people. The people appear to be manipulating various parts of the cars in real time to create beats. A lot of people are impressed with the videos and some have reacted quite angrily to suggestions that there may be foul play going on. It's not my intention to make a value judgment here or to comment on the artistic merit of the videos, but this is an attempt to explain why I think there's very good reason to think that the performances are fake. So a bit of background about me. Uh, I've been working with audio sequences and digital audio for about 12 years. Most of that time my audio work has consisted of arranging very small slices of sound that have a percussive character. Lately I've written software to measure the precision with which a human performer can play back a musical passage. So when I watched these videos, in both cases, it was obvious to me that the audio tracks we were hearing um, weren't being created by the people we were watching. Instead, the audio for the duration of most of the videos was the output of a computer sequencer playing back digital samples of recorded car noises. In the case of both car performances, there are two unmistakable fingerprints of digital audio sequencing. The first one. The timing is exactly on the grid, it's metronomic. Only a computer can perform music that way. Even the most technically skilled humans aren't that precise, and even if they could be, they wouldn't perform music that way. Musicians naturally push and pull the timing of notes by tiny amounts. This is a big part of what gives a musical performance its character. The producers of the car clips could have made them considerably more lifelike by applying processing to humanize the timing of the sequence. Uh, humanized in in the language of uh, music software just means applying a random push or pull to each musical event so that it doesn't sit exactly on the timing grid and it makes the sequence sound less robotic. The second thing was that the sound repeated themselves exactly. I don't mean that I heard a car door slamming repeatedly, I mean that I heard the same recording of a car door slam over and over. If you repeatedly play back a small piece of audio, for instance, a recording of a snare drum, it can quickly sound unnatural, especially if you play it repeatedly in quick succession. That's what happens in the car clips. And again, the producers missed a simple way to create something more lifelike using a technique called multi-sampling. What they should have done was to sample many different door slams, and then have the computer select a random sample each time it needed to play a slam sound. So to finish with, uh, we'll take a look at some waveforms. I made a recording of myself, myself clicking my fingers, I imported it into Audacity, which is a free sample editor software. I made a copy of the recording onto a second track here. It's a stereo recording by the way, so that's why you see four horizontal lines in total. I offset the copy of the recording so that, so that different clicks would align with each other as closely as possible. So at this level of magnification, you can see that the clicks look similar, the, the waveforms look similar. Uh, here's how they sound. So this is the first one. And here's the second one. They sound pretty similar, not identical, but pretty close. As we continue to zoom in though, we notice that the similarity between the waveforms starts to, uh, starts to drift. Uh, for instance, at this level of magnification, we already see that in the tail of this uh, the top one, we have several distinct islands of, uh, of amplitude, whereas in this one, we have a much more even tail. So as we get closer, the differences become more apparent. We already see that there's a lot of uh, disagreement occurring between the peaks and troughs of this initial attack portion here. So in the second one you see this uh, area of uh, high peak trough frequency just here and many of the peaks and troughs don't align. So here I've imported um, the audio from the video bootboxing featuring Snob Skrilla. 
I've done a similar thing. I've made a copy of the track and offset one of them so that two different bars of the audio coincide with each other. Uh, so here we get a bit closer. So this is a, a double door slam that we're seeing here. And here's how the other one sounds. There's an immediate similarity uh, between the two waveforms. But as we zoom in this time, we see that the similarity holds really well. So remember that because these are stereo tracks, uh, you should compare uh, the top two of both, of both of them and the bottom two of both of them. So again, we have a very good agreement still, this distinctive three-peak uh, three pattern here is repeated in this one up here. So as we see here, the waveform appears to be made up of individual points. Each of these, each of these points is one sample. Confusingly, sample in this context doesn't mean a short audio clip, but the smallest unit that a digital waveform is made up of. Uh, a sample in an audio file is analogous to a pixel in an image file. In this example, there are 44,100 of these samples for every second of playback. So this is an absolutely tiny slice of audio we're looking at, and the waveforms still agree. So down to the sample level, we have a really high agreement still between the two waveforms. So here I've done the same with the audio from the track uh, Techno Jeep. So I'm focusing on this section here. Here's how the first track sounds. And the second one. Identical, pretty much. Um, so of course we can see the waveform looks very similar to start with. And we'll focus on the first of these slams here. right the way in. So you see the similarity is really high still. And we'll just focus on this little peak here. Again, even down to the sample level, the agreement is very, very high between the two tracks. This shows beyond doubt that the slamming door sounds in these two videos are sequenced audio clips and not the recording of a human performance.